Hello everyone and welcome to so many games for a little time. Today we will be playing Stars of Akarios and my name is Joachim and uh, we'll be doing scenario number four. Um, first of all you'll be hearing music and the music is the official soundtrack of the game uh, which I just edited in because otherwise it's too difficult. Uh, yeah, it's easier that way. Okay, aside from that, um, there's a bunch of stuff here that you already see. First of all, on my player board, it's everything that I bought or gained last time. So now I have long shot, but I also have EMP blast, target lock, targeting computer, and resolve flank. Uh, so there's all the stuff that I have. Long shot, you probably remember, it has um, a pierce uh, armor, so basically pierce shields, so I can hit them and the shields won't matter, which will be important in the coming. Um, scenario. EMP Blast uh, means that they are stunned and stunned means that they won't be able to fire. Um, Alright, so that's the stun one. Target Lock means I can have advantage when I attack them. Targeting Computer means I can have an extra target and uh, then Resolve is when I deal no damage and uh, my stress is decreased. But, of course, we are at uh, number four. Scenario number four, that's where we ended. All right, so let's, well, scenario two is where we ended. Um, we uh, rendezvoused back with the sparrow. And then they told us to, what was it again? Um, the Rathans appear to be retreating back to their giant space platform. This seems like good news, but your gut, your gut tells you differently. So now we're at four, the end of Medallia. So I will read it, but as usual, feel free to skip it if you don't want to hear a story, okay? It takes only a short amount of time for all the remaining enemy fighters to retreat to the capital ship. You find yourself in a moment of relative stillness. It won't last long, but it's a good time to assess this strange-looking flagship. It's an unusual shape, more like a floating island than a classic cruiser design. While you watch, it begins to slowly spin in place. A few remaining UIA ships take their chance to flee from the field of battle. Where they are heading doesn't matter. Anywhere is better than here. Saul's voice breaks the silence. Hold your positions, cadets. This is a Rathan ship. We're attempting to initiate contact with the... And then a giant flash. Either Saul was cut off or he's staring open mouth at what is happening. The large ship bursts with light and fury. Colorful shields radiate across its surface. The glow is pulsing heavily from deep within the vessel. It seems as if something is building from deep inside. Without warning, a blast erupts from the ship, penetrating the surface of the planet below. The continuous stream of red light builds in intensity until, in an often awful moment, it punches through the crust of Medellia itself. What happens next is never forgotten by anyone present, but rarely spoken of. A wave of shock passes through everyone watching. The only voice you hear is a cry of anguish over the radio that, despite the static, is recognizable as Captain Soma. Medellia shifts in space, going in different directions. For a split second, the planet looks like an optical illusion or an oversized puzzle not fitting together. Then a colossal crack appears. It is followed by more, fracturing across entire continents. Giant chunks of the planet begin to fall away from the rest of the sphere, like a sandcastle losing to the tide, everything begins to drift from itself. On what remains of the surface, gravity appears to be working in reverse. Entire cities float away. The atmosphere disperses, into space and hot magma from deep within the planet starts to harden as if it's exposed to a new cold reality. The beam abruptly stops. The giant weapon appears to be drained. The death blow to Medellia has emptied its reserves of power. Only emptiness remains. Medellia is gone. You don't know how long you have stared at the destruction before your proximity alarms scream into life. It alerts you to a vast angular piece of Medellia's crust floating towards you. You have to get moving. One more look in the direction of the flagship weapon reveals enemy fighters pouring from it. They appear to be headed towards you. A quick scan shows an, an enormous amount of debris. You try not to focus on the fact that it is the remains of Medellia. The shock of the moment keeps you dissociated, allowing you to only focus on what is happening here and now. There's a possibility that you could hide amongst Medellia's fragmented remains before finding somewhere to recharge and determine your next steps. Simultaneously, you notice some civilian ships who have barely managed to get off the planet. They must have been damaged while leaving the planet as they appear to be adrift now. 
floating amidst the debris of large buildings and giant land masses. One of the pilots finally speaks up. Sparrow? What do we do here? Sparrow? Okay, so I have a choice. I can either help the civilians escape, which is civilian rescue, go to scenario 5, turn and fight the invaders, which is Ashes of Medelia, go to scenario 5, or flee to fight another day, wisdom or cowardice, go to scenario 5. So uh, I'm going to, it's always the same scenario, right? So I'm going to help the civilians escape because I'm a good guy. Um, and it says here, your squad has gained an achievement. Mark of the achievement listed below your choice of the squad progression pad. I'll be doing that later because I forgot to take a pen. I don't want to get up. So I'll uh, take that later, but you will be ticking it on this pad. Here you see prologue. I will be ticking civilian rescue later on. Okay, so let me turn the page. And then we have this one. The end of Medelia, Draconian system, planet of Medelia. And another piece of story, but you can already see the setup of what we will be facing. Objective, so escape to safety, scenario five. Objective, escort the sparrow out of the system. So here's the story. Now that you are going to leave, it won't be easy. Saul's voice crackles in from your radio. Stay alert, pilots. The enemy is targeting the sparrow. We're going to need you to fight them off as you find a clean exit. Even through the frustration, his humor remains intact. I hope you didn't have plans tonight, because you're not out of this yet. Waves of fighters come in hard and fast. Behind them, you can see the giant ship that destroyed Medelia powering up again. Doubtless, they'll turn their attention to you soon. But in the meantime, you've got to focus on these fighters. This time, it's Captain Soma on the calm, her words barely getting through her gritted teeth. Cadets, stay close to the Sparrow, and we can get out of this together. Whoever is responsible for this act will pay. I will not stop until that happens. She wants to stay and fight as much as you do, but it will have to be another day. Your dashboard lights up with alerts. Taking a deep breath, you head back into the fray once more. So the objective is escort the sparrow out of the system. And then it's uh, learn how to play about spawning and the special rules and so on. It says, remember the sparrow is immune to all combat effects and a pilot can damage their ship ability to ignore one attack on the sparrow. So basically you can use yourself as a shield for the sparrow. Um, special rules, the sparrow starts with 10 hull. So now we're using the sparrow. So we put 10 hull here. At the end of the round, the sparrow moves forward two hexes and pushes any ships from the final movement hex. So, Bum bum, and if there's any ship here, it get pushed pushed away. You succeed when the sparrow moves off the board. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven turns, basically. Seven rounds. Enemies can target the sparrow. Spawn at the end of rounds two and five, adjacent to one or two, whichever is closest to the sparrow. So we have one and two here, so one and two here, and then we're gonna spawn depending on which is closest in round two and or five. Well, and five. And then you can see it is different depending on how many people are playing. So it's only one person, me, one ship. So one regular synthetic fighter. So that's already the two basic ones that are on the map now. They'll just spawn more. Uh, so the maximum of ships that I can actually have on the board is four. So I have no idea why I put out six on the side, but you can't see that, but whatever. Civilian rescue, each pilot begins with two stress grades. It's fantastic. So because I want to save people, I'm stressed out. All right, so I'm not going to look at what the other things do. All right, so that is the scenario. That is what we'll be fighting. Um, nothing much here. So there is, of course, the uh, how to use the spawning and also the sparrow. So when it comes down to spawning, spawn ships do not act in the, round, in the round they are spawned. Spawn ships start facing their nearest targets, and if directed to spawn enemies across multiple scenario markers, which is not the case, randomly place the ships evenly spread across the scenario markers. Place enemy ships first onto the scenario marker location and then adjacent to if needed. And spawned ships are always considered part of the eliminate all enemies objective, but that's not an objective now, so it doesn't really matter. Um, aside from that, 
doesn't really matter. Uh, the Sparrow is immune to all combat effects and will push enemy and pilot ships out of the hex and the Sparrow would move too. So it also says here, it's immune to all these six effects, okay? And also when the Sparrow takes damage, a pilot may choose to sacrifice a part of their ship to protect it. But if you do that, however, you increase your stress by one. Okay. You can do that once per scenario. So you cannot do it once per round, only once per scenario. All right, that's, it. that's basically it. So before we begin, you have these two planets here. And once again, I'm using the other side of the board. Looking back, maybe it would have been better if I had chosen the other side because now there's planets on top of planets, but whatever. I just like this colorful one better least for now. I guess next time I'll check the scenario and think about it a bit more. <laughs> um, anyway, so the planets here, you cannot go through them. You cannot shoot shoot through them. They're obstacles. Here, if you go in the, in the meteor field, you lose one hull and you can still shoot from out of it. You can shoot into it, but you cannot shoot through it. And those are the most important things. Also, my ship will start uh, either here, 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 or here in a wide fan. Um, so I'm thinking probably going to go for him, but both ships have a, um, hull of six and shield of four. And it seems to be rather impossible to get behind them. Cause even if I do a one, two, three, and then one, two, 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 oh no, I could get behind this one immediately. Then I would get advantage, but I most certainly one, two, three, one, two, three, up, up. I most certainly will not get long shots, so I could, however, for example, be here, do one, two, and then face this one head on, but then I'm easy, I'm bait for both. I could just start here, and then can I hit it with long shot? I could immediately hit it with long shots. One, two, three, four, one, three, four, which is interesting. It is, however, not, once again, not uh, advantaged, but I could choose long shots and um, but I would want to go a little bit closer actually for the simple fact that if I'm a little bit closer I could use an MP blasts but I could do both I could shoot a long shot and then move in so there's potential of doing both so I think I'm gonna start here so I have a straight shot at him with long shots and that's a good start all right um and I don't know why these are here. It's supposed to be like this. Okay, so let's see. Wow, so much for long shots because it's going to be mostly moving around, it seems like. Um, of course, I could immediately uh, heal and basically reduce my stress by two. So that's nice. But of course, I'm going to start off with long shots, which is two damage and piercing as well. So, um, oh, but I could do target lock, but not too far. So wait, maybe, maybe there's a different way of doing this. Um, because I could move basic twice, so I could do hub, hub, and then I'll be facing here and hub, hub. Yeah, I'm gonna do that actually. I, I'm stuck there now because I rolled my dice, but I'm gonna do this. So forward and up like this. Sorry, Sparrow. Then I do it again. Forward and then upwards. And then I use one to rotate. That's a lot of dice just to be able to long shot with advantage. Oh well. Up, and then I use long shot. And of course, before I do long shot, of course, I use my target lock. So a red is put on number six. So he is now target locked. And that means I get to draw two modifier cards. So the first one is zero. So, oh wait, so I'm doing two damage, okay. Or minus one. So I do two damage to him, piercing, so he's down to four health. Okay. Then I have one more, so I could potentially go through him, but then I'm in the meteors, which is not good. I could go past him, but that's also bad. 
I could flank, but that would also be bad because I would be taking hard damage. That's not very good. I think I will just stay like that because there's not much I can do with my extra die. Target computer is useless. EMP blast cannot be used. Um, yeah. Okay, that's it. I hope I'm not going to regret it. So here we go. One, two, three. Okay, synthetic fighter. So number two is going to go first. He is going to rotate towards me. He's going to shoot. And he does three. One, two, three. No, he can't reach me. So he's going to move three. So one, two, actually. And then he's going to shoot. And he has me at an advantage, which is bad. So he's going to do three damage plus advantage so either minus two minus one so ah oh, so i'm kind of lucky so it's just two damage to my shields up oh well i already played it wrong this guy is immune to target lock they're both immune to target lock so i can't even use target lock so let's say this minus one i don't know it's going to be on top so whatever happens next i know i'm going to get the minus one but i'm not going to let it cloud my judgment Okay. All right. So, huh? Yeah, that's that. That sucks. Um, so always check the abilities of the fighters, people. Okay. So that's what he did. He attacked me. Then he turns towards me. Well, he he moves, turns towards me, attacks. Done. And he does affect me. He basically slow, uh, radar jams me. So, radar jam means um, it's nothing with attacking though. What is it again? Um, disadvantage in all my attacks. Great. All right, then the next guy is going to do the same thing. He is going to shoot at me, which he can, but luckily uh, he's not advantaged. So, we'll just see. So, it's uh, three damage. So, that's three damage. Okay. So one, two, three. So it's pretty bad already. I'm down to three hull. <laughs> what are you going to have to run and hide behind this barrel, most likely? Um, and then after he does that, he also moves, but he's just going to stop in front of me because he cannot go through. Me. Okay. So that's done. Uh, Sparrow then moves two steps forward. I gain one shield and then I roll. And this is the... Uh, this is the second round, so now there's going to be, is, uh, the spawning was, I think, at the end of round two? Yeah, at the end of the round, a ship is going to spawn. Oh wow, this is horrible. Okay, so basically I need to heal. I need to heal. And I think I need to rotate and I need to fly away. <laughs> So I'm gonna heal. So I'm gonna put these three here. So I get two hull. And my stress goes down to zero. I replenish my long shot, which I forgot to decrease. And nothing else has to be replenished. And then I'm, I'm going to rotate to here. And uh, so I'm gonna use this one, sorry. And then I'm gonna flank, which means one, two, three, up. Up, now I'm here. Which basically guarantees they won't shoot at me, but they will shoot at him. Um, he has 10, but then he might die, actually. He might die. All right, let's take these two back. We're here face to face. How about I do the same thing, but then instead of... Oh, no, yeah, I can't do that. Being able to long shot this guy would be good, but I don't see a way of doing that. Um, or I could just flat out shoot and empty my barrels on him. So if I do, if I don't heal at all, I do have three and one shield. If I don't heal at all, and I just empty my clips on this guy, because I can use long shots, but I'm disadvantaged. So I need to use, it's going to be minus one for sure. 
Um, I can't target lock or anything. But, however, I now have this, which means that we stop them from fighting, which is what I'm going to do because it affects both of them. I'm going to use two of these. I'm going to use my EMP Blast for both of them. So it does two damage. So it was one damage, but of course, for the first one, which will be number six, no damage. And then for number two, no damage. But both of them, however, are stunned. So while they'll still move, they won't be able to shoot. Okay, then I have three left. Um, I could actually still heal. Oh, yeah, and this goes down, of course. Um, or I could just shoot this guy and then fly away. Um, I think I'm just gonna shoot that guy. Long shots. No, 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 I can't do long shot because he's right in front of me. Uh, no, I'm gonna heal. He's gonna heal in the face of danger. So five and stress minus two, that's it. Then the sparrow moves through me. He doesn't push me away, it's only the final position. Um, oh no, he doesn't move yet first, it's the enemies. But remember, they are not gonna shoot. So, they, so first number two, he turns towards me, it doesn't matter. Shoot, no. And then he's gonna move four spots. So one, two, three, four. Then it says rotate, one and two, and then nothing. And then um, he does use abilities. So I'm guessing the computer icon is an ability. Okay, if I understand correctly, um, this one and this one as well, they have an attack, as you can see here. And sometimes there's no attack, but it's just an ability that's there. So in this case, there's no ability. So these guys simply do not attack. They don't do anything. So even this effect doesn't happen because they don't fire. That's, I'm hoping this is correct. Uh, I guess that makes sense because the effect happens when it hits you. So yeah, in that case, then it's this guy's turn. So he rotates, but he's already facing me. He doesn't shoot, so then he moves, which is also four. One, two, three, four. And then he rotates, up and up. And that is the end. Then the sparrow moves two forward. One, two, three. And one ship, uh, number three, will uh, pop up here, facing the ship. There you go. So I'll take number three. A new enemy. A new enemy. Well, the neighbors are saying goodbye. And uh, these are... Oh my god, I've been playing wrong here as well. Oh, but it's okay. The attack is the same. <laughs> okay, these are supposed to be basic fighters. Uh, so the shield is actually down to two. But it doesn't matter because I didn't hit them anyway. So, And their life is still the same. All right, so I need six and two. Remember, he spawns, well, they don't activate in the round they spawn, but they spawn at the end of round two. So they're going to activate now anyway. So we're already there. Um, these guys, they are now going to be able to attack again. Uh, I gave him my shield. And it's going to be very interesting to see what I'm going to do now. Because at the end of round 5, there's another ship coming. I really need to get one out of the equation, I think. But the question is, how quickly can these guys catch up? They're small, right? So I think they're fast. So I think there's going to be a problem. Oh yeah, my radar jam. I uh, ended up uh, using this as well since it's gone. All right, so I have a lot of movement, but it is difficult for me to end up behind them. I could long shot him. I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, because if I can do, I can do long shot him if I'm if I end up here as basic movement and then long shot. 
Or should I focus on number six? But I have to turn around though. That would take, that would take too long. Oh, it's so annoying that all these are basically useless. My target lock, I chose that and then freaking everything is unusable. Um, actually, what I'm going to do first is do another EMP blast. Um, I need to use... I'm going to use one for EMP blast. And then use targeting computer to target both of them. So that will also stop them once again from attacking with basic weapons. So uh, they are both uh, stunned. And then I get to... Um, so this goes down here. Um, and I guess they're not... I don't think you use advantage here, right? Because it's just a blast. I don't think it matters if you're behind anyone or not. I think it's still advantage, depending on where the ship is. So, but it doesn't matter because I'm no, no, in, in no advantage whatsoever to both of them. So it doesn't matter. It's relevant. So let's do number two first. So it's one damage. No damage. <laughs> and number six, miss. Oh my goodness. <sighs> and then I shuffle. All right. So then I think I'll be doing a basic action. So here, hop and hop. And then I'm going to basic long shots the other one. Okay, so basic long shots, that guy, um, and uh, yeah, we'll see, one, two, three, minus one again, wow, so I do one damage to number three's hull. This has been a horrible, horrible shooting game so far. Then I have two movement lifts. Um, all right, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go forward normally. So one and two, and then I'm going to use my flank. So go forward three, one, two, three, hop, hop, and end up there facing this guy. Now, of course he's gonna move, but my hope is that I'm, I'm gonna distract him because I'm closer. So he's not gonna go for him and these two cannot shoot him. So that's I'm just basically keeping him out of the wind, as they say. So let's see what the fighters do. All right, so they're gonna veer, the veer movement. So number two first. So he's gonna be like this. So he's gonna go and one, two, and then straight. But I guess he cannot. So he can't shoot. Uh, oh wait, 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 wait. Sorry. Um, he was here. First, he rotates. So, one. It's good. And then he doesn't move. So, he's going to go up, basically sideways. And then one forward. Like this. And then he'll turn again. But he can't shoot. So, that's it. Then this one. Um, he's gonna do the same thing. He's gonna, well, this later on. First is this one. He focuses on me, so he does one and two. He sees me and he's gonna fire. No, he's not gonna fire. He cannot hit me. Cool. So then he's gonna move one, two, and then one forward. And then he is gonna shoot at me. So it is zero damage, but the base is three damage plus, oh my god, times two, six damage. Whew, really? Six damage. Oh my god. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then he has the computer effects. 
And the computer effect is... I've never seen that before. Hack. Pilots increase stress by one. Okay. Yeah, no wonder I'm stressed. The guy almost completely destroyed me. So this is reshuffled. And then we still have the six who will do the same thing. So one and then go like um, I have to double check though. Yeah, one, two, and then like this. But then once again does not shoot. Oh my goodness. Well at least it didn't shoot the sparrow, I guess. So the sparrow goes forward two. We go forward another round. And I heal one shield. And I basically have to run away again. I get all my sh my and run away and heal and uh, EMP blast the one on the top. And I think this time the sparrow is gonna have to take a hit. Okay, so let's see what I'm gonna do. So this, oh my god, this is horrible. Oh, it's all shooting. <laughs> um, I can get both of these with the radar jam, but it'll only, I mean, EMP blast, I mean, which will stop them from hitting. Actually, no, I'm this one, of course. So I can only hit him. Um, I think I'm gonna let this barrel take the hit now. Um, I need to heal. Yeah, okay. I'm healing with uh, the stress one. Up these three. So I go up two. This is down one. Then I use the EMP blast. For this guy, actually, I'll just maybe use two, but it doesn't make a, make a difference because two just increases the targets, but this one's way too far. Um, or I turn and I hit him with a long shot, but then he can fire at me, so no. All right, so I do that uh, EMP blast on him. Um, yeah, we'll see. Zero. So I do one damage to him, uh, but that's his shield for number three. Number three, his shield goes down one, and he is stunned. The other two are no longer stunned, so they can fire at will at the uh, at, uh, at at the uh, sparrow. So I have one left. Long shot cannot work. Um, I could use the stress die somewhere else though, instead of there. But I'm not going to. I think I'm just gonna keep it like that. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep it like that. All right, let's see what the enemies do. All right, so number two is here. So he's gonna go, he's gonna try to shoot, but it's too far. So he's gonna then move two steps into the left. So one, two to the left. Then he's gonna turn and then he's gonna fire, but he cannot reach him. So he does nothing. Yay, good for me. Then uh, number three, who is over here. So he cannot shoot, but he can move. So I'm gonna have him target. Um, should I have him target me? I'm gonna have him target me. So he's gonna target me and uh, he's not gonna shoot, he's gonna move forward. So one, two, and then veer off here and then turn. So up, up, and then do nothing because he can't fire. So that's it. Um, then we have number six. So he's already faced correctly, he can't shoot. So he goes one, two, and then like this. And then one, two, and once again, he doesn't shoot either. Then the sparrow moves two forward, I gain one shield. And we are now in round five. 
at the end of round five another ship spawns so so far the sparrow has been able to avoid everything all right this one is gone now um oh wait sparrow is here sparrow is here and six is here he does hit him though yeah he does hit him sorry he hits him and he's advantaged so number six hits for three two for three so the hull goes down to seven so yeah he actually got a hit in okay and then he moves forward okay so at least he's uh, he's farther away again all right but the effects um potential effects that are here uh would not happen okay but there's no no effect no effects anyway all right my turn Oh, by the way, last round I healed. I was also able to refresh. So, but also use my EMP blast, which is minus one. So I refresh it back to one, and then I'll refresh it even more. There you go. So, that is a lot of stress. But actually, that's good because my stress is at zero, and stress can really help. Problem is I can't really use my um, I can't use my flank. That's the problem because it's one, two, three, and then I hit here and here, and I do not want to take all damage. Um, Can I? I cannot hit him either because he's too close to me. I have to move around to hit him. I could do one, two, three, and then if you're here, then do an EMP blast. Turn around, fly back. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, I'm gonna flank with stress. So, one, two, three. Then go here and then go here uh, like this because I came from there and then with stress I guess I oh know actually I don't need to have stress I'm just gonna use this because I don't need to turn around then I do EMP and I hit these as well so I will hit for one and use my targeting computer to hit the second one so um, both of them will get hits so number Let's say number two first. So it's one damage. Yeah, no damage at all. And then number six, two damage to six. So basically shields are now at zero. So that's done. Then um, I'm going to use stress to do a normal one. One, two. And then I think I'm going to go for the miss card and right? add a miss card to my deck because I'm going to do a double stress to do long shots. So I would penetrate the shields of three. Um, sadly, I'm not advantaged, but at least it will be three damage. That would be nice if it's times two or plus two because then it'd be destroyed. That would really be cool. Anyway. Before I forget, uh, two and six are stunned, and uh, this is back to one. Um, yeah, so double long shot. But if I do double long shot, they're gonna shoot at me like crazy. Maybe I should do long shot and then fly past it. Basic long shot and fly past him. Because otherwise I might be dead. Yeah. So I'm going to do basic long shot, which is two damage only, but then I definitely won't kill him. I can't do MP blast again. Um, boom, 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 boom. I can't do flank again. I think I have to decrease this as well. Um, boom, 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 boom. Uh, I'm gonna stick to long shots. So it's two, stress increases. Let's see, 
2 plus 2 is 4. Oh, if I did double, it would have been destroyed. But yeah, so 4 and it penetrates, so he only has one hull left. Um, and then I am going to try to get rid of them. So I'm going to go forward three spots. So one, two, three with another stress. So that means I have to get up and get a miss card. Oh, no, no. Well, I do have to get up. Because I'm so stressed, I get a miss card to my deck. And it means I reshuffle everything again. Okay. So, I have one ship that's almost dead. I have two other ships who can move or can't fire. Uh, so, let's see. All I'm hoping for is that he doesn't. This guy doesn't hit me again for five or six, because then I'm dead. All right, let's see. Okay, so number two is first. He's gonna go. He's gonna shoot, but he can't reach. He can't shoot anyway. So he's gonna go forward two spots, and he's gonna end up there. Then it's number three who is gonna target me. He's gonna do one and two then he's going to fly two spots one and two then he's going to turn and turn and can and he can hit me and he's going to give me one stress because of the computer and it is going to be um three damage minus one so two damage so luckily my shields can absorb that <sighs> all right and then number six moves up two but even though he can reach, he doesn't shoot because of this. So these two go away. Um, it is the end of the round and a new one comes out. A new enemy. A fourth enemy. And that would be number one. Once again, all six, shield two. And he's gonna basically spawn uh, here, I guess, closest to the sparrow. But uh, then the sparrow's gonna move. So, the sparrow moves too. Hup, so he's now in the middle of all those guys. But they can easily kill the sparrow, okay? Let's make that straight. Let's get that straight, because our basic attack is three. So if all four of them manage to hit him, the party's over real quick. So I get plus one, and we go into the sixth round. So uh, basically, we have to survive this round. That's it, just to survive this round, and it's over. No need to defeat all the ships, just escort it out, and it's fine. So I am pretty heavily stressed. And I have all this. So obviously I should do EMP blasts, but what is the best way because i could use two i could i could target three ships so if i were to get to this spot i can take out these three take out meaning they won't fire and then we basically got it i think so how am i gonna get there here is also okay but once again, how am I going to get there? Because I need to turn around a lot. Um, I can't end up facing here. Um, if I rotate, I'll be faced there. Then if I do a basic action, I won't end up there, no. Or I could do a basic action that moves me three. That's one, two, three here. And then I can still get all of them. Yeah. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I rotate. Uh, I'll use a shooting one, maybe, to rotate. Let's see. One and two. I'm not going to use a shooting one. I'm going to move and move and move one. Then I'm using a regular move of three. So, one, two, and three, and then the uh, barrel died. <laughs> and then I use EMP Blast, double, boom, boom, 
which means this is gone now. Double EMP blast, which means I can target two, but I use my targeting comp computer to target three. So number one, three, and six. So all three of them will are stunned. There you go. And then we'll see how much damage I do. So, um, once again, I have no advantage whatsoever because I'm facing it completely wrong way and I don't think abilities actually do that. So we'll see. Let's do number one first. Zero. So two damage to number one. So their shield is at zero. Then it is number three plus one. So that's three damage to three, which explodes. He's dead. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, so he's gone. And then I do number six as well. Zero. So three. Uh, what am I doing? Three damage. I'm not doing three damage. I'm just doing two damage. But still, that one is destroyed. This one just has one damage. So number one. Uh, just lose one. Lost one. But this one's still destroyed because you have one shield and one life. So one plus one is two. So then the last one, one damage to six, which will be three health left. Then I still have one die left. Um, it's only number two who can still fire and I'm potentially closest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flank to not be closest anymore. <laughs> so uh flank so that's also completely used that is one two so one two three up up and i take one health damage also my shield increased this round i think but i don't know maybe it didn't i guess it did okay then it's their turn but once again number one and number two when well, number one number six they don't fire Okay, first, number one, it will rotate toward its target, uh, which is one and two, but it cannot fire. So it's going to move ahead of it like this, and then rotate again, one and two, there we go. And then we have number two, who can fire. It cannot reach yet. It'll move forward uh, two spots. One, two. It does have a clean shot at the sparrow. Yep. So it's three damage and it's advantaged. So it's two damage or three. So three damage. So the sparrow is down to four. And then number six. Um, oh yeah. And then it also moves, but it can't move. Then it's number six. He uh, just moves one, two, and that's it. Nothing else to do. All right. And also it will try to stun, but it's immune to stun, so it doesn't matter. It's the end of the round, and the Sparrow, one, two, gets off the board. And we win. We win. So it says, score the Sparrow out of the system. Um... And then, then you succeed when the sparrow moves off the board. So that has worked nicely. Okay. So let's see what happens then. Escape to safety. Success. Well done, pilots. Return to the sparrow and we'll get out of here. Captain Soma's congratulations are rare. It doesn't go unnoticed that she's referred to you as pilots for the first time. Once you get back in the hangar, ask a busy looking maintenance tech about Grease's whereabouts. She's down working on the jump drive. It took some damage during the flight. It looks as though you're not getting as far away as you hoped. So, the reward. But before the reward, I'm gonna go get my pen. Okay, the first reward is a pilot skill. So, I'm going to take this one as well, which means I get two plus ones added to my deck. So, these are the two modifiers that I now have to add. And you'll see they'll have an arrow. So that means in the future, when it comes out of the modifier deck, for example, oh, plus one, arrow means you add another card. So it's plus one and miss. <laughs> so it negates the plus one. 
<laughs> oh, that's horrible. Or, for example, next shot, if it's all reshuffled, plus one, plus plus one, plus two. So stuff like that. Now, remember in this playthrough, I got a miss because of the stress that is all reset. So that miss that I got with the head here is removed again for the next scenario. Okay, that doesn't stay in my deck. I also get 15 credits, which now puts me on 25 credits. And also I tag, uh, or I cross out end of medallia. So end of medallia, done. And also civilian rescue, done. All right. So then it says move and explore sector D21 with the sparrow, lower its supply by one and read the conclusion. So uh, sparrow goes to three. And uh, let's put the events on the side for now. This is the side. So the sparrow was here, dun, 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 dun. but now he moves to 2.1. Up. And now he's in space. So, uh, read the conclusion. No one seems to know you're heading. Grabbing an ensign as she leaves the bridge, you ask her for info. Sol happens to exit not long after. Leave them alone. She doesn't know anything. I can tell you where we're going. We're headed to Daboth Major in Sector D3.2. Although there's no base on that planet that I know of. Sol chuckles at your blank expression and shrugs. I guess we'll just have to trust that the captain knows something we don't. Okay, so it says here, the sparrow is traveling in space and your squad must now navigate space exploration. Read pages 27 and 29 to read about space exploration. You will leave the scenario book now and control the sparrow in space exploration before scouting at the coordinates below and being directed back to the scenario book. You may come across blue scout icons in your travels. These are side missions which you can choose to scout or ignore. Um, so it says here, uh, scout D3.2. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so D3.2 is where this is. So it says here, jot down scouting locations on your progression pad for future reference. So I guess it would be here. So D3.0. Where am I going to put it? D3.0. Okay. All right. Um, okay. For the episode on space exploration that will be in the next video all right so thank you very much for joining uh so many games for the time once again my name is joachim i hope you have an amazing day and uh i'll see you next time bye, -bye.